Hey guys, Vlad here with AVT Astro. So today I wanted to make a quick little video about how to collimate an SCT telescope. Uh, so I volunteer a lot, or um, I should say I used to volunteer before the pandemic shut everything down. Uh, with the telescope library and the telescope workshop uh, at my astronomy club, the Rose City Astronomers. Uh, if you're, you know, if you're watching this and you're a club member, hello to you. Um, and uh, that's one of the most commonly asked questions that I get is how to collimate an SCT telescope. Um, so today we're going to be working on a Mead uh, 12 inch advanced coma free. Um, so yeah, let's check it out. All right, all right. So we're inside the observatory now. And um, so basically, while it's still kind of light, let me kind of go over the basics of you know how you do a collimation. Uh, so typically, what you'll want to do is have a um, you know, some kind of a good eyepiece uh, to do the collimation. The way that we're actually going to do it is with the C CMOS camera, so you can actually do it that way as well. Um, honestly, I kind of prefer doing it that way. It's a little bit more precise and a little bit easier because you don't have to keep on going from the eyepiece, you know, to the corrector, to the front and back all the time. Uh, you can just kind of watch the screen so you'll kind of see me do that. Uh, but an eyepiece works just as well. Um, so yeah, so you'll want to have either a CMOS camera or some kind of camera or an eyepiece. Um, depending on the scene, you know, magnification wise, you probably want to do it like at around 200 X. If the scene is, you know, not really good, then, you know, you might want to do a lower magnification. But then when you do have a night of good scene, I'd probably follow it up and do a better uh, collimation. Uh, so anyhow, so that, uh, the other thing that of course we're going to need is to get access to the corrector plate in the front here. So I've got, you know, obviously the dew shield on, so let's go ahead and pull that off um, and take a look at the corrector plate. Alright, so here's the corrector plate on my 12-inch uh, advanced coma frame. Um, as you can see, this bottle, or this uh, particular one, does have, uh, these are called bobs knobs, so you could kind of adjust the collimation, um, you know, with just your fingers. Typically, uh, if, you know, if you have a stock SCT, they'll have, uh, like, uh, collimation screws to where you'll have to do it with, like, a screwdriver. Works the exact same way. Um, essentially, the way that you do the collimation, um, you know, and we'll kind of go through through the steps, but you'll essentially adjust, you know, these knobs here. Um, essentially, they're like a pull-push configuration. So there is a central pivot in the center of the secondary mirror there. That <clears throat> these, uh, you know, by adjusting the tension of these, the uh, secondary mirror essentially tilts around them. Um, so anyhow, yeah, it's essentially as simple as adjusting those three screws. All right, all right, so we are up and running. So basically, um, that is a defocus star. Actually, we might, yeah, it's that guy over there. I'm not really sure what star that is, but it's a pretty bright one, so I'm sure it's got a name. Um, so don't really know what it is. It's just like the first star that I saw out there, and it's a pretty comfortable height. So now, defocus star there. Uh, the basic setup is this. So um, I actually have the camera inserted into the diagonal right now. Uh, there's some debate as to whether you should have a diagonal when you're doing collimation or not. Um, I've done it both ways. I haven't noticed too huge of a difference. My general thought is that you should collimate your scope uh, in the configuration that you're going to be using it. So if you're going to be using it with the star diagonal, I'd probably collimate it with the star diagonal. Um, if you're going to be using it without a star diagonal, uh, chances are like probably for imaging, then you know obviously don't have a star diagonal in there. So we're assuming that we're collimating this kind of more for visual use, so I am using the star diagonal. Okay, so how do you know that your scope is in collimation? It's actually pretty simple to tell. Um, what you're after is these rings um, to be perfectly concentric on, on all sides. So as you can see, um, this telescope, you know, it isn't an observatory, it's permanently mounted. Uh, the collimation isn't going to change too terribly much on it, but uh, 
there is a bit of miscollimation here. So if you can see these rings right here on this side, they're a little bit closer together than the rings on this side. Uh, so when it's in perfect collimation, all of these circles will just kind of be kind of, you know, going um, and uh, just, you know, totally concentric on both sides. So we do have a little bit of an adjustment to make. Um, if you're kind of more out of um, collimation, basically, you know, like th this would be squished together even more or, you know, whatever side that's on. And then, you know, th that's how you know that you're kind of more severely out of collimation. So this is actually not too bad, uh, but it could definitely use a tweak. In fact, um, Let's see if we could figure out which side the miscollimation is on. The way that you do that is actually pretty simple. So, you know, hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. Uh, here's the corrector plate, the front of the scope. So usually what I do, the easiest way to tell which side the miscollimation is on is just put your hand in front of the corrector. I mean, obviously don't touch the corrector, but put it in front of the corrector. So my hand is in front of the corrector right now. Here's the image again. And as you can see, as I move my hand, you can kind of tell um, which side the miscollimation is on. So basically, the miscollimation is roughly there. And then if we look at the corrector, that's kind of where my fingers are. Um, so this is kind of like up down. Actually, let me let me walk around just so I can kind of get a better angle of this. So basically my hand was roughly, you know, right here, essentially, is where that miscollimation was. In fact, let's see if we could see that again on the screen. Yep, yeah, see that? So we're kind of at that area where the donuts were a little bit thinner, which is here. Now the way that you know which collimation screw you need to kind of mess with is that it'd be the one that's kind of closest to your hand. Uh, but in this case, as you can see, my hand is kind of here and we're in between these screws here. So you can either adjust both of these the same amount or you could adjust the opposite screw. Um, and so with this, you know, kind of the general rule of thumb is you're supposed to turn these, you know, very slight. So you're not like doing like a full turn or anything like that. I'd say, you know, if you're you know, kind of more severely out of collimation, um, you know, probably start with maybe like a quarter of a turn. Um, generally though, like if you're pretty close to collimation, like, you know, like we are right now, um, you probably want to do like an eighth to a sixteenth of a turn to kind of, you know, basically uh, kind of start to dial the collimation. Okay, so, Wow. So as you can see, I don't know if it's from me standing in front of the telescope, like the scene just got a lot worse. Let me try to move away from it. I'm just kind of curious if it's just heat from me that's causing the scene to get a lot worse. Uh, it's kind of just boiling over a lot more. Okay, let me give this a few minutes and see if the scene kind of calms down or maybe it's just my body heat that's, you know, kind of causing it to kind of be this bad because this is uh this is a little a little too unsteady uh to kind of do cover. oh yeah it, it got better i think that was just for me standing in front of the scope really okay um and now another thing too so as you can see on the screen uh there's like that x that goes through uh the center there uh what that is that's the actual center of the field of view so when you're doing collimation uh, you always want to center the, uh, the the diffraction patterns, what this is called, in either the eyepiece or on camera. So if it's not centered, that will affect, you know, like how, how that donut shape will look. So yeah, do keep that in mind. All right, so um, as you can see, um, with the scene that we've got going on today, uh, the collimation that I have, honestly, this is probably about as good as I'm going to get in this scene. I'm really not going to be able to tweak this too much better. Um, so what I'm actually going to do is I am going to intentionally make my collimation actually worse than what it uh, 
know what it was. So I'm just going to randomly turn this uh, knob, which is the one that we kind of needed to adjust anyway, in a random direction, probably about a quarter of a turn, to see if, um, you know, if we could basically mess up the collimation. So I turn it counterclockwise right now. And lo and behold, if we look at the screen, the star is done. Basically, anytime you adjust the collimation screws, what's going to happen is that whatever is in the field of view is actually going to move. And you'll see that in the eyepiece or on, you know, on the screen. So let me recenter this and uh, we'll see uh, about fixing it. All right, so I kind of zoomed out there on the screen um, and I'm using the hand controller that's you know out here to kind of move this back into the center of the field of view. Again, um, that X indicates the center of the field of view of the camera. Okay, so now we are back in, you know, roughly the center of the field of view. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that groovy times let's uh, zoom back in to a uh, hundred percent there okay so now it's pretty clear um, that our diffraction pattern is I mean that definitely does not look concentric right even in this kind of not so great scene that we typically have here in the northwest I mean I can see that there's a problem there Okay, so again, um, you know, you can kind of do the same test, you know, you could, you know, I'll actually put my hand this time in front of this bottom screw, right, and then if we look at the screen, where's that, that's kind of like in the, you know, like that fatter portion of the rain there, so we know that this is kind of what we're having to deal with, is either adjusting this screw or these screws. Now, um, depending on how much adjustment you need if you uh, so right now you know I, I i went counterclockwise to kind of make the diffraction pattern worse you know than what it was so i now i know that i need to go clockwise to make it better depending on how much you're gonna adjust this you might actually need to adjust these as well so right now if I'm tightening this, and if I'm tightening it right, whether it be with my fingers or with a screwdriver, and if it starts to feel really tight, what that means is that you actually need to start to loosen both of these guys here. Essentially, again, the, there is essentially like a central pivot here. And if, you know, if, if all three of these are just too tight, there's just not enough give there so I mean you do want you know you don't you definitely don't want these to be loose you know because then the mirror will kind of tend to flop around as you're moving the scope from you know like side to side so you do want these to be fairly tight but at a certain point uh, you know like if you know if we're tying and tying this uh, you will have to kind of you know loosen these up a little bit especially if you're severely out of collimation this is actually still fairly close you know to being in collimation so it's not too bad so um what i'm going to do at this point is actually i'm going to tighten this screw but i'll i'll have the camera centered on uh, on the screen there so you can kind of see me doing it in you know kind of in action I guess okay so let's see what's going to happen as I tighten that one screw yeah did you see that diffraction pattern move it's kind of all moved up right so I probably tighten it about a sixteenth of a turn let's do about another sixteenth okay so now um as you could probably see, the diffraction pattern is a little bit closer to being concentric, but we're also not in the center. So we need to, you know, whether you've got a manual mount or, you know, like a tracking mount, you need to recenter at this point. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And uh, let's see here. I'm, I'm never really good at this. I kind of just guess, guess which button I'm supposed to press. <laughs> But that's, you know, that's good enough to be in center. Um, and at this point, you know, with this type of scene, it's kind of hard to tell. I think we're still a little narrower there, you know, than here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go clockwise on this screw, you know, the same one that I was just adjusting. 
Uh, and let's, you know, I'll kind of do it and you kind of watch the screen again. So very slight turn, probably, you know, roughly a sixteenth of an inch. Um, still pretty close to being centered in the field of view. I'm going to kind of move away from the front of the scope and see if this will kind of settle down a, you know, a little bit more. So yeah, I mean, that's looking pretty good. I think it's pretty concentric at this point. And I'm just going to do like another sixteenth or so. Just, you know, another sixteenth um, turn clockwise of this to maybe get this a little bit more center. I'm still feeling like I'm a little uh, thinner here than here. So let's go ahead and do that. Actually, let me show you this time of me actually turning the screw. Okay, I think it's in focus now. So just a very, just my new turn. Like you probably almost couldn't see it turn, but you know, I felt it turn just a tad. Um, again, I'm gonna recenter here because we're a little bit, you know, a little too far off center at this point. And let's see where we end up. Okay, I'm, I'm trying to kind of stand, you know, away from the um, front of the corrector plate. Uh, but overall, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling like that's pretty, pretty concentric given our scene. And again, with collimation, um, you know, on, on the average night of scene, you might not be able to get it better than, you know, what we have at right now, which is, you know, pretty good. It's not perfect. Um, the way that I'm doing it right now with the CMOS camera, too, um, it's not going to give you, um, I would say, 100% collimation. This is certainly good enough for most applications. If you live in an area that has really good scene, though, um, you can actually get your collimation even better than you can with the, uh, the diffraction pattern. Essentially, you'd actually want to do very, very fine, minute adjustments uh, with the star being in focus, and you'll actually be adjusting the, essentially the way that the airy disc looks. That's getting a little bit more technical. You know, I'm just trying to cover, um, you know, like the basic collimation. So if you could get your collimation looking like this, I mean, you know, you're probably, your scope's going to be performing at like, you know, at least 90% of its capability, which is a lot better than, you know, if it's just grossly out of collimation, you're just kind of, you know, afraid to tackle it. All right, so hopefully that gave you guys an idea of, you know, how this is supposed to work. Um, it's a pretty easy procedure, you know, there's nothing too much to it. I know the first time you're kind of doing, you know, it can be kind of intimidating. You know, do keep in mind, I mean, you really can't hurt anything by, you know, collimating your scope. The only, you know, a couple of things to watch out for is, you know, when you're doing the collimation, especially if you're using a screwdriver, you know, be careful to not, like, jab the corrector plate. I mean, that is bad, you know, because you will scratch it. So you definitely don't want to do that. Um, the other thing is, you know, don't force these screws. Like, if they're not turning easy, you know, like, you know, take a time out, kind of see what's going on. Maybe you need to loosen them a little bit or something like that. So just do not force anything. Otherwise, I mean, you really can't you know like hurt anything so if you're not getting the images that you're expecting from your SCT uh, this is a really good place to start you know check your collimation if it looks like you know the little donut pattern is not concentric like it's supposed to be you know don't be afraid to 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 do the collimation procedure pretty easy to do again you can't really hurt anything like unless you know you're forcing stuff so anyhow yeah if you guys have any questions comments or anything like that please leave them in the link below um, if you like the video, you know, do the like button and uh, if you're not subscribed, please do consider subscribing and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.